<laughs> and Mr. Bentley walks into the room. Hello. And walks back out again. <laughs> Just coming to check up on me, I think he is. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, so, recently, um, one of the questions in our recent Q&A was regarding a book that was given to me. It was actually found by my father in a charity shop, a thrift shop, um, in 2006. And uh, it's chock full of photographs of music, uh, not, well, musical and film stars from the 1940s. As you can see, Gene Simmons and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, Stuart Granger, who's on the back, Patricia Rock, Clark Gable, Lucille Ball, they're absolutely fantastic images. Um, printed, well, done very much of their time in a kind of duotone pattern or duotone colour scheme, black and one other colour. Um, this is also another um, image from the same book. Now, I kept this and put it to one side and forgot about it for ages and ages and ages and I was reminded of it um, recently in well, by uh, a lady who left a comment on one of the videos. So this is the book, um, 1949. I couldn't do anything with it at all until 2019 because that would have been when the copyright ran out on this book. So what I've done is I've taken um, this picture from Sally Gray. Now Sally Gray was an English actress of the 1930s and 40s. Um, sadly passed away in 2006 um, but um, she actually retired fairly early. Um, she actually retired in 1952 from film. Um, later on she went on to become um, the Baroness Oranmore and Brown. So she obviously married into um, the, the gentry. Um, and like I said, died in 2006. She was incidentally born on the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. So, what a honey she was. Anyway, um, what I've done with this is, I don't want to use this particular image. I don't want to damage this. I'm going to keep these. So what I've done is I've actually scanned it into my computer. And then I've turned it black and white. Like so. So what I've done is I've flipped her in the computer. Uh, as in mirrored the image so she's facing that way as opposed to that way and I've just turned the image black and white because this kind of suits what I want to do um, better because I want to have another go at doing another um, kind of spotlight technique not same as before where I'm just spotlighting a particular um, image I'm actually going to spotlight just a part of an image this time. So to get started, I've got some um, of my matte medium and I'm going to glue this down straight onto the page. So I'm going to put some matte medium down on here, do a little bit on there and try and minimise um, the, the amount of bubbles and wrinkles I get as best I can. So the only way to do that is to actually also apply the matte medium onto the back of the image too. So I'm going to try and do that, not go overboard with the matte medium this time. So first of all, put a coat onto the actual page, which won't buckle because it's too thick. So put an even coat in all the way across the back. And this matte medium I'm using it is quite runny, it's not like a gel medium at all. Okay, so let me just move that out of the way for now and just quickly paint the back. So because this is a thinner paper than the card we're sticking it down onto, the chances are it is going to um, buckle and wrinkle a little bit. But if you apply it to the back, it then affects the fibres of the paper because it soaks in. Um, <coughs> excuse me trying to do two things at once here because I don't want to get that on the front of my book. Okay, so if we now bring that in, lay it down, you've got like a double contact point where the glue's on both. So you can then 
See it's drying really quickly. It's another warm day today, so. Alright, so if we go over the top with there, we hopefully it should be able to minimise as much as possible any kind of bubbles in the paper. So I'm working from the inside out. Make sure I get a little bit underneath. And this has been printed on, um, I've done it on the laser printer. So it is a color laser printer, but I've just done it in black and white. Gray scaled, I think the phrase is. So where I need just to add a little bit like on the edges just to kind of make sure that it sticks down and work any air bubbles out from the center as best we can I think that's probably going to be best as we're going to get it. So let's just give it a quick dry and then if you have got, yeah, you see I've pulled some of the, the paper off there, but that's okay. We can fix that in a minute. I'm just gently going around making sure it's all down. Okay, so the matte medium is dry. I've managed to get it stuck down with virtually no bubbles or wrinkles. But I did have a slight issue just about here where <clears throat> because the paper was a little bit damp, um, I did actually end up rubbing through the paper. But luckily it's on a white piece, so you can't really tell. So the next thing that I want to do, and some of you may <coughs> think this is going to be a bit like overkill because I've just gone over everything and sealed it with matte medium, but I'm also going to give the entire um, page a coating of clear gesso. So this one is the Dina Wakely Media Clear Gesso. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to make sure that there's plenty of tooth um, on the page so that I can maneuver paint around to get the desired kind of effect that I want. So I'm just going to go over the entire image with the clear gesso and as you can see I'm just using the lid as a pickup point and palette just to grab some. Just the one coat of the gesso should be enough to do the entire, <coughs> to do what I need to do. I'm a bit hoarse today. <coughs> I should have perhaps brought a drink up with me. So just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then just up and down a little bit, just to kind of get rid of any unnecessary brush strokes. But we don't mind a few brush strokes being in there. And then again, let's get this dried off, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so the gesso is now dry. As you can see, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring out some of my Dina Wakely acrylic paint, which is the lemon colour. Now, yellow is <coughs> fairly kind of translucent anyway as a colour, but add a little bit of water to it, mix it up so you can grab a brush, <coughs> make it a little bit loose like so. If I add just a tad of water, that's it, make it nice and kind of fluid. And then I've got a baby wipe, a wet wipe here. I'm going to pick up that paint and then go over the image.
So we've now gone completely over. Almost created a kind of Andy Warhol-esque kind of image. And I'm just using and dabbing the wet wipe now just to add or get rid of some of those kind of very prominent white marks. So it just kind of mottles it a little bit more. There we go. Just like that. Just like that. So what I need to do now is once again is to get that dried off. Okay, so the yellow paint is now dry and we've got our, like I said, our faux kind of Andy Warhol-esque kind of image staring back at us. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've taken my circle scissors and I've cut out um, a hole from a piece of card. Now, normally, I would place the circle down as the spotlight and then put the colour over the top. I'm going to do the exact reverse this time. I'm actually going to take the piece of card that has the hole in it and I'm going to place that down onto the page and then I'm going to put colour through the hole. So what I want to just quickly do is just take some of that repositionable tape and I'm just going to add it just around the hole at this side and I want to just catch her eyes and just the corner of a lip just like so and I'm just going to push down just so that adhesive just holds it down into place then I'm going to grab some blue distressing and a clean foam, I don't want any contamination, so we'll just grab a clean foam. And then I'm going to load up with the blue. This is a lightish blue, like so. And then very, very gently, I'm going to start adding that blue through the hole. So hopefully what we will get is a mixture of the yellow underneath and then the combination of the blue on top obviously diffusing the yellow colour through the spectrum to give us that kind of um, greenish kind of look but just in this kind of circle that we're adding down now I've used tumbled glass because it is a light blue but it might be that we might need to use a darker blue to get that more greeny colour. But I didn't want too much of a strong effect. But I think what I might or what I might be doing is actually adding on. It's difficult to tell what the colour is going to be like until you actually take your mask off. So I might be thinking, no, no, this isn't dark enough or it's not green enough. But actually, once you take the mask off, it may be perfect. And I am using a water-based ink as well, perhaps I should have used to be an archival blue. Who knows? Okay, let's just lift that off and see what happens. Like I said, it was repositionable glue, so it should just wipe off. 
There, can you see that subtle circle now on the page? So we've gone green just around that area there. So that's water-based ink, so that will take a little while to dry off. I'm just going to give it a little bit of help and encouragement. Fairly sort of subtle. Not jump straight out at you. It's one of those things that you just look and you think, oh, hang on a minute, there's a circle there as well. So what we could do now is just to add maybe a little bit more detail into the background. I want to add some white, but I don't want to touch what we've just done. So this is where the other circle comes in. Grab some white gesso. I'm going to add some, um, some sprinkles, splatters, whatever you want to call them. Just a few. Get some of that white gesso. Add a little bit of water. And then just position that right on there. Just where there's quite a bit of black. around the outside and that should do. Lift that off. Yep, liking that. Let's get that dried off. Okay so the splatters are dry but I want to add just a little bit more pattern into that background. So I've dug out one of my um, earlier stencil, well not really earlier, but probably from last year, or was it earlier this year? I can't remember. Anyway, it's one of my stencils, Florestrella, this one is called. Um, and I've also got some white ink. So this is a pigment ink pad from a company called Dovecraft here in the UK, and it's called Crystal White. I always keep... A white foam for this and I just want to see if I can add in just subtly just hold that stencil down because my page is starting to lift a little bit and I'm just going to subtly dab just to kind of create a smoky effect with the white but I'm being very careful not to go over the yellow bit too much. It just kind of adds that little bit. kind of smokiness into the picture and I'm going to avoid um, <clears throat> like I said going into that white bit there or where the green bit is now yeah I like the subtleness of it not every single art journal page you have that you do has to be um, comprised of a million and one different colours and a million and one different layers and that kind of stuff. You are allowed just to do an art journal page that maybe only has one or two layers. Okay, so again, pigment ink, so I'm going to need a little bit of time to get that dried off. So we'll get it dried and I'll be right back. Okay, the white has dried rather nicely now and I think I don't know whether it's an optical illusion, but that green seems to be popping just a little bit more. Or it may be just the way that I've got the light in in here. Um, I'm hoping that it's popped 
just that little bit more. So you've got the contrast now from that, um, the yellow and the green, well the blue if you like, um, that's been placed over the top creating that kind of spotlight onto her face. Subtle, real subtle, but I think it works pretty well. So you can play with spotlights of different colours rather than just white if you want to. So I just want to add one last thing just to finish off the art journal page and then I'm going to call it done. Okay so the final step then is just to add a phrase or a quote where I've just printed off using my brother label printer and I'm just going to snip off the excess edges and then peel the back off because it is obviously a label printer so it's self adhesive and I've just taken a line from a Madonna song from the 90s that famous one about Vogue not the magazine but obviously the dance <coughs> where she says beauty's where you find it and I think I'm just going to put that across those little stars there. And then just to finish off, so I'll grab a straight edge. <coughs> I've got somewhere, there it is, buried amongst all the other detritus on my desk. And I want a black pen. There we go. And I think I'm just going to go over the edges just a little I know you can do this by hand but just in that straight edge pen kind of mood today and then just take it right across just to kind of bring it all together There we go, I think that'll do for today. So like I said, just wanted to have a play to see whether or not we could do that different kind of spotlight technique on an art journal page without too many layers. And I think you'll agree, obviously using um, the picture of Sally Gray, you start with beauty, you can't really go all that wrong, can you? So I'm just going to sign this off. So I'll just add a signature and today's date, which is da, 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 2nd of August. 2820. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that experimental art journal page, another experimental art journal page. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. Thank you.